I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. I know you, th you heard me say goodbye and all that sort of thing, but there is a small possible chance I might get a sunset image. Uh, I've gone through Fort William. I'm still heading towards Glencoe. I'm 12 miles away from my location, but over on my right hand side, I have got the mega of all mega light rays. If I can get myself in a location, I'm gonna finish this video with a photograph <laughs> yeah, with a photograph, I'm just looking at those light rays and I'm just trying to work out where I can stop. I think there's a parking place just around this corner and if there is, I might be able to get the light rays on a little island. So keep your fingers crossed. All waylay plans, couldn't park anywhere along here. There's no, there's no lay-bys, the nearest lay-by is down, a bit further down and as I keep looking over my shoulder, the rays are missing. Wow, that lorry's just gone for a big puddle and drenched everything. Um, yeah, so I'm going for another plan. I'm going to pull up and get the Connell Bridge because I love this bridge. It's a big old iron bridge. So I'm going to try and get to the other side of it. Just by the roundabout, there's a place I can pull up and I might just get an evening shot with a little bit of color because it's clear over on the horizon. If the sun just drops below, I might just be able to get a little shot from that. In 200 yards, turn left towards A828. I knew it was too good to be true, it's just not working, just not, I can't get the light, I can't get in a position, I know, I know two places I can shoot the bridge, but both places are dark, boring, not very nice, not very pretty, so I'm now heading up to the Glencoe range, so I'm just going to see if I can actually get to somewhere. I just want to see if I can get to somewhere where I can get a touch of this evening light because the light is awesome. Um, in the mountains, it's just like a glow. It's just glowing. This is what we like. We like a good rush and a panic. Now I have one idea of a location if I can get there. Um, there's there's a couple of viewpoints as you're going up through the Glencoe range. And the viewpoint looks back this way, which is where the light is. Uh, it also looks forward into the mountains, maybe like the Three, Fist Three Sisters viewpoint. So if I can get up there, maybe that's worth a, a quick pullover to finish my day off and uh, get a photograph with some color in it. Just going through the village of Glencoe and up in front of me looks <laughs> dramatic to say the least. Jeez, is that rain, snow? I don't know what that is up there in front, but no wonder it's glowing. <laughs> Scary looking. constantly looking in my mirrors and seeing what the light's doing behind. This is a viewpoint, but there's no light. The light's behind the three sisters. Ah, I could see it in my mirrors. I could see the light. I could see it glowing. It was all orange and fiery sky, but now it's hidden by the bloody mountains. That's where I was thinking of parking to get uh, the S Bend, which is old Jimmy Savile's old house. There's the S Bend, I can now see it. I have no idea how to get to it. But first of all, I just need to see if I can chase this little bit of light. Look at the waterfall up here. There's a waterfall called the Three Waterfalls Meet or something like that. Uh, In a quarter of a and your destination the water the coming down is absolutely horrendous. It's so much water. But I just wanted to get a last photograph for you. Just that, that last one with that glimpse of light. I think it's too late. I think we're just a little bit too late. Wow. Wowza, look at the water in that. I'm, a, I'm sorry I can't show you, but that 
is impressive. I may even be back in a minute to get a picture of that. That's Your impressive. Destiny. Right, I'm just gonna scoot up the road. And if I switch it back on, I'll manage to find something. So we managed to get a shot shot in the end. I've run down through the river. Um, I've come across this rickety little old bridge down here. You can't see it really, it's in the dark. The light's gone. I didn't catch the light in the distance, but the later we stood here because I'm still talking to this chap. What's your name? Blair. Blair. Blair? Cool, cool. That's got to be a Scottish name, that is. <laughs> talking to Blair. He's from Glasgow. He's up with his missus and poor girl's in the car up there. And he's getting into landscape photography. He does a bit of wildlife and he's got some pretty good wildlife shots. They're quite nice. So I've been showing him loads of tips and hints. Um, but while we've been talking, the clouds have actually changed and it's actually got lighter, which is strange. So we've got these nice fluffy balls of cumulus clouds going on up there. Uh, and I'm using this river then to snake us down. And I've got the little white cottage, which is pretty standard for Glencoe. And I'm using the bridge and the river as a leading line to take me through the image. So I'm gonna do a bit of focus stacking as well. I'm gonna focus on the distance and I'm gonna focus on the bridge just to make sure I've got everything in and the little snowy bits on the top <clears throat> just seem to be adding to the picture so i think i'm going to end it here and i'll see you in the morning and any images i have taken in this evening i might even go and try and do some light trails as well i'll bother them on at the end of this and hopefully it won't be raining in the morning bye bye I've got back to the van and I'm packing my gear away. Uh, I had not a bad little shoot. I was just talking to a guy down there, Blair. Uh, good chap. You can tell that I'm on the side of the road. Uh, he's getting into landscape photography. He's a wildlife photographer and uh, he seems to be doing okay with his wildlife. He showed me some of his pictures. Um, I didn't get the shot I was hoping to get, but I have got a shot of the little cottage uh, the Glencoe Cottage, which is pretty cool. But I just want, before I go, I want to mention our, I don't, like, I don't like using the word sponsor because they're not sponsoring me, they don't pay me. But I want to just mention um, our sponsor for today's video, which is Through Night. Through Night has sent me another torch. And when we're out in these sort of conditions where it's dark and stuff like that, a, a good little torch is really handy to have. I've just had to walk across there just now without a torch in the bog and it was a bit scary. This is, and I'm going to have to read this because I'm not prepared at all, this is the T1S magnet, they call it. So it's magnetic, it sticks to things. As you can see like that, it sticks to things, which is pretty handy. And that's handy for one reason. And one reason is you can turn it on, attach it to something, and you've got a light here to work with, which I think is a really good idea. Uh, it also means I can attach it anywhere in the van and stuff like that and I can actually use it for when I'm doing work on the van and stuff like that as well. So magnetic is really handy. Uh, this has um, a few light settings with it. It's, as you can see, it's quite small, comes with a really nice lanyard, a USB-C charger, uh, a nice clip on it as well, a belt clip so you can attach it to your camera bag. With it being small, it fits in your pocket and it's quite nice. This is actually really powerful for what it is as well. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of spiel about it because this is just a little add-on on the end. I'm going to have to lift my glasses so you can see me. This is actually a 1200 lumen torch. So it starts off like normal. We're going to start off with a firefly. So through night has a firefly. So you press it and hold the light and it comes with this really tiny dim little light, which is really good for reading your notes or setting up your camera. And you can read your map without blinding yourself or anything like that. And when you're working on a camera at night, you're not upsetting everybody else. So that's your firefly. Turn it on normally, one press, and it comes with the first setting. It remembers its last setting it was on, and low is seven lumens. Lasts like this for 44 hours, so it's pretty good. Seven lumens is enough light I can see around the van, so if I'm walking at night and stuff, I can actually use this amount of light and it'll probably be fine for me. Or again, if you're working on things, it's not too dazzling. Uh, the next one, again, you press and hold, and it goes up to the next one. You can see this one's a lot brighter. That's 94 lumens. You've got five and a half hours like this. So five and a half an hours is pretty good, and you can see that you've got a little blue light on the side there as well, which is showing it's, it's actually operating and running uh, and I think it's a red light when it's charging press and hold it again this is where it starts to get serious so we've got one two 
three look how bright that is that is mega mega bright so this is 407 lumens and it'll run for 80 minutes like that so that is a proper bright little light isn't it but what's more is this is a 1200 lumens you double press this double press my fingers are so cold i can't even press the button let's go again ready double press there we go Look at this for a bright light. How super bright is it? I'm bouncing it off the ceiling and it's lighting me. Yeah, so you can see it's bouncing off the ceiling and lighting me. My whole van is illuminating. This is 1,200 lumens with a runtime of five minutes. <laughs> with a runtime of five minutes and then it's gonna drop down to 300 lumens for another 70 minutes. So yeah, seriously, seriously bright. Then if you wanted a strobe, there's a lorry coming. Oh! <laughs> and I am still on the side of the road. Um, You've got a strobe of a thousand lumens. Um, basically, you press it three times, one, two, three, and it gives you that strobe. You've got that massive flashing light. I don't actually know why we have strobes, but I'm assuming it's a deterrent type of thing. So it, it, it does work, because you get a deterrent, you get this light in your eyes, it's gonna slow you down. Um, you've got a maximum throw of 184 meters. It's got 8,460 CDs, 1.5 meter impact resistant for dropping. Uh, IPX8 waterproof which is two meters waterproof drop it in water or use it in the rain and it'll just be fine so that's all really I wanted to show you it comes with a spare rubber grommets for your charging port and for the seal underneath so if you know it, it's, it's gonna last you a long time it even comes with a new, a new o-ring um, cracking little torch I've done through night stuff many times and I'm always pleased to show them and they work really really well so back to me in the video Speak to you soon. Good morning, good morning. It's really raining, piddling down. It's wet and horrible this morning. So I'm in Glencoe, where I was in the last video. And you probably can't see me because it's dark. It is absolutely piddling it down. Persisting. I mean, raining is not the word I would call this. I would call this someone's just, <clears throat> I don't know, <laughs> it's so so wet i've moved down the road to where the free waterfalls meet and i just jumped out the van i'm absolutely soaked to death and i've only walked 50 foot just to have a look at it and it is a it is gushing like mental i took a bit of video on my phone and i took a couple of photographs on my phone um yeah my phone's drenched as it as it is my glasses were drenched everything's drenched um so I'm going to get out of Glencoe. There's no point in me trying to do this um, S-curve because if I do, I could fall and end up in the river and I'm never going to be seen again. Um, let's see if I can just show you a picture of what this looks like. That is that is the waterfall where I've just been and had a look. It is monstrous this morning. It is flowing like nobody's business. Um, I did take some video of it. It was just... Have a look. I'll put it on. I'll put it on for you anyway, um, so you can see it. But look at that! <laughs> it's crazy, absolutely crazy. So I'll put the video on for you, so you can have a look. But yeah, I'm not staying in Glencoe. Um, I'm going to make another plan. The plan. I'm going to take you to see the Kelpies. Now it's not an amazing photographic place. It's two massive, girt big metal structures of horses heads i'm sure you've all heard of them and seen them uh, if you haven't i've had, i've been there before and i've taken photographs but it'd just be interesting to go again and have another look now i'm a little bit older and wiser and see if i can get a shot of it if it's not like this that is if it stays like this all day then 
I won't be doing much at all really. Um, and then I'm gonna go to the Falkirk wheel, which is a Millennium wheel. It's basically where the canal comes in and then they put the canal boats in the top and the big giant wheel comes down and puts the canal boat at the bottom and sends it out of the bottom. Again, I've been there before, but it'd be interesting to go and have another look. Like I say now, I'm a little bit older, wiser and just in a different mood for, to things and seeing, you know, take another picture and to show you guys as well on my way through. Um, I'm just trying to think of things to do. If on the way down through, I see something that's interesting. If on the way down through the light changes or at least it stops raining, I will try and get out and take some photographs if I see something. That waterfall is just spraying up in the air at the moment. It's just, it is bonkers. It's going upwards. That is just, that's just crazy. Let's see if I'm gonna show you this. The waterfall is actually going upwards. Look at that. The waterfall is going up. That's how that's how bad and how windy and how, how rough it is. Now I would love to take photographs of that, but I can't I don't want to take the risk of slipping. Um, you've got to go down underneath the bridge, which is not bad. I've been down there before, but yeah, I just don't fancy. I just don't fancy. Just look at the water running past the van down there. It's just there is so much water on the road. It is just ridiculous. So I'm going, I'm going to play it safe and just get the full Kirk out of here. <laughs> let's go down to full Kirk. Let's see what happens on the way. And I need some breakfast anyway. So I'm gonna find some of the park where the rain isn't hitting me side on and uh, get some breakfast. There you go, good morning, let's get going. Okay, so as part of my recce mission, <clears throat> I wanted to have a look and see how bad it is to get down. So I've actually pulled up the car, or I've pulled my van up near Jimmy Savile's house. Um, I'm going to have to keep calling that because that's what it is. Um, I'll, I'll, I've taken a picture on my phone. I'll just show you his place and it's been graffitied up and, and it's not a nice place to be really. Um, but this is where I can park. I know now I can park here. I have to cross this bridge and I know where the waterfall is. So I'm just going to have a, quick shot me camera because I've got my phone out and it looks amazing. The picture looks amazing even from the road. So I'm going to take a couple of roadside handheld shots and then we're going to crack on and head down because the rain, the rain is sort of not as bad in this bit of the valley. It's not getting that sideways, that sideways wind, um, even though it's still teaming it down. So I'm going to get a handheld shot just to show you the area uh, and, uh, and the three sisters. They look amazing in this horrible, nasty weather, but yeah, I've got to get something to check. I've got to get something tonight. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Oh, so absolutely scrapped that idea. As soon as I got up there with a the camera, <clears throat> it just came down like nobody's business. So I'm absolutely stoked. So I've put the heater on. Oh, I've put the heater on, I've shut the doors. I'm going to get my breakfast on the go. Look at this poor camera is absolutely drenched. Oh, I'm gonna end up ruining another camera and I am if I'm not careful but I just I just love these conditions I, I, I can't help I can't help myself but want to go out and shoot them because these are conditions that you don't see photographs in normally you get blue skies nice weather and stuff it looks amazing you've got all this lovely texture and stuff you've got all this you know the subdued sort of muted um, background with the with the conditions and stuff like that and and these are what I like. I like this these conditions, but it's just so difficult to shoot in them, um, even with weather sealed cameras. And this isn't a weather sealed lens, so you know I've got to be a little bit careful. Um, and if you've not seen my previous videos, you'll notice that I've, I've actually broken my XT4 by taking it out in the rain. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have some breakfast. I've got some black pudding to have, so I'm going to have my black pudding wraps and then uh, a cup of coffee. And if it does die down, like now. See, looking out there now, it's stopped again. Or well, it's calmed down, so I could have... Oh, do you know what? It's impossible. I'm going to have this. I'll get back to you, and uh, eventually you'll get to see a picture before I disappear.
So I'm drenched. I've just come into the ski resort to get some water because I think the water's running out. So if you're ever up this way and you need water, come into the ski resort, any tap other than the bike wash, any tap other than the bike wash is drinking water. So the best bet is to go into the shower block and use the big tap in there because they've got a sink in there with a big, a big tap so you can get it in your bottles. So onward, let's get out of the Glencoe range if I can and uh, <laughs> try and get out of this rain. It's I've seen so many pictures again in my mirrors, just you know seeing things thinking look at the you know the recession of the hills and the the rivers are raging they are amazing these rivers are uh, the snaking curves the twisting and they just look so good but i just can't i can't stop i mean when i can stop i can't get the camera out the rain is coming sideways so hard that the second i take the lens cap off the second i even with the lens hood it's just coming down the lens hood there's just no chance um, and the water on the roads is just bonkers there's so much water on the roads the spray is crazy so I think just I've got to head down south I've got to go head home my sat nav's already telling me by the time I've been to Falkirk, Will and the Kelpies um, by the time I get to my location which is normally for me is the fourth rail bridges at Queen's Ferry that's my end of my trips normally to Scotland and then I head down uh, down the motorway home so by the time I get there it's already going to be near two o'clock and that's without me stopping um, so I think I'm just going to knuckle down now and just crack on and get going Not going to get there any quicker doing this. All right, I've just been in the shop, Green Welly shop. It's a must if you're ever up in this area. Go in the Green Welly shop and get yourself some fudge if you like fudge. I've got a clutty dumpling fudge and a Gaelic coffee flavoured fudge. So, never heard of them. Don't know what they're going to be like. Let's start with the dumpling one and uh, We'll open it and eat it on the way. I just like fudge. Let's have a go, see what it's like. Mmm. Not bad, it's a bit like a... a bit like a rum and raisin, to be honest. It hasn't stopped flipping raining all this way down. I pulled up in a little lay-by just to close my eyes for 10 minutes, just to relax. Because it's hard work driving in the rain when it's constant. Nothing to look at, just rain and greenness. So I pulled up, I'm gonna open up me other bit of fudge and carry on going. I think I'm a little bit tired now anyway. So we should be there for about half past one at the full Kirk Will. But I, I've even got a feeling I'm just going to go and look at it and then drive on to Kelpies and then drive on to Queensbury. Because uh, it's not letting up. Even when I've driven out of Glencoe and I'm in Stirling now, it's not, it's not letting up at all. It's just, it's just rubbish out there. So as much as I'm trying to find a photograph, it's not really happening. I've still got another about 30 miles, no, 20 miles to go before I get to um, the Falkirk Will. And we just had 
an inch and a half of sunlight. <laughs> um, I pulled into this lay-by, this parking spot. There's a, a war memorial by the looks of it to the, to the side of me. But what I was watching was behind me in my mirrors I had this really dark grey sky. And I mean really dark. And then on my right hand side I could see the sunlight. And I thought if that sunlight peeks through enough it would hit the rain that's behind me and cause a big rainbow. The problem is um, there was no foreground, you know, I had nothing to put in it. Now I'm watching these crows flying around the field and I wish I had the camera on me when I drove in because there was hundreds, oh, this side raised rain come in again, there was hundreds of crows flew over the top of the van and I thought, wow, that looks so good. So I pulled into this field and it just so happened that the sun has hit this copse of trees over in the background. So I've taken a shot on the foot on the XT4 and I put it on the screen for you. It's just literally a handheld shot. Um, spur of the moment because the sunlight was hitting the trees and the field, which was bright and golden. And then I had this really, really, really dark black sky behind it. So I actually think the image worked quite well. The only problem is there's a power line that runs straight through the middle of the trees. So I'm going to have to try and clone that out first. But there's a shot. There's one shot. So it's got me optimistic that if I get to the... See, look up in front. Up in front, I've got golden light hitting those mountains or the hills and then these black clouds. So there's hope that I might get something that's interesting that's spur of the moment from the van. And there's always full Kirk Will when we get there. So I've just seen a sign for Stirling Castle. So one thought, I'd take a little look at it. I'm just not sure how to get there. So I'm just looking for road signs now, which is not that easy to do. I can see it up on the hill. Uh, road sign, Stirling Castle. So let's go and have a look and see if I'm just. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. Get a shot from it from a distance. Um, yeah, shot from the distance. So I'll get the castle up on the hill. So I'm just having a look now and see if I can find somewhere to park where I can actually see it or pull over on the side of the road. Uh, I don't want to drive too close to it because obviously the closer I get, um, the worse the image gets. You know, you, you, being right on top of it, like here, is pretty good. So if I can get somewhere down on this little industrial estate, I'll see if I can get myself a picture of the castle. found the rainbow. The rainbow's out my window, but I can't, oh, I can't get just a picture of a rainbow. There's nothing there. I can't get in a position to get that damned castle as well. Um, well that guy's just driven down there. It says, uh, access only to Weir Bungalow, Old Mill, Old Mill Cottage and Old Mill Farm. Oh, I wonder if I can drive down there. Mind you, if I drive down there, there's nothing there. I'm just going to jump out the van and just have a have a little look and see if I can actually see anything. Um, or just turn, at least turn the van around so I can see into the field. And then if that rainbow appears, I can get it. But no, it's, it's just not appearing. It's, it's fading now. Because there is an old hay bale shed down there. Right, so I need to try and find this castle. That's, um, uh, yeah, I can see it from everywhere, but I can't get in a position where I can see it properly. So that's my mission. Put your seatbelt back on as well, Compton. Right. Oh, I won't give up. <laughs> if I can get something, I will. Do you know, you know the film Never Ending Story? You can see the sunlight on my face, it's bleaching me out. You know the film Never Ending Story, where the blackness is coming after um, the young lad? 
this is what it's like. The blackness is following me and it is chasing me. It's coming after me. And I'm trying to drive into the light. Keep coming into the light. Oh, it's just so hard being a photographer when it's like this. It's just, you just so want to take pictures and it's just nothing. I mean, it looks awesome. Now the blackness, you can see my face is disappearing, getting darker. The blackness is engulfing in the sun and it's sucking the sunlight up. Ah, I've got to get something. Third right on the roundabout. Turn I think left. found the shot. Take the second right. Take the next left. Problem is, I've right. lost the light, but I think I found a shot. And what it is, when I can turn around and get back across the bridge, that is, um, there is a, a monument, the Wallace Monument, um, which is pretty nice. It sticks up in the air on the top of a hill uh, from, from Mr. Wallace. And then you've got this old bridge, which is just literally in front of me. Now I could actually walk over the bridge and get a shot that way. I might just put my waterproof on and just take a walk over the bridge with a camera in my hand and just see if I can get a quick shot. Um, let's just turn it around first so that I'm facing the right direction because I've got to go back the other way anyway. And then, uh, yeah, just get a handheld shot. Just Because this is what I like. I like taking photographs and I can see an image that, that's there. I just haven't got the best light for it, which I did have a little while ago. Don't get me wrong, 20 minutes, half an hour ago, the light was absolutely amazing because the background was all lit up and you had all this black sky, but that is now all turned to black sky. <laughs> so I'm just gonna park here for a minute on this little residential area. Right onto Road, and I'm just gonna walk across the bridge right onto and take the camera with me. And when I get back, I'll uh, put the image on and show you. What an absolute waste of time that was. I couldn't get high enough really. The view I could see from the van was up on the main road and I just couldn't quite get high enough to actually get it all in, I don't think. I've taken a shot. I might be able to crop in on the image and make something of it, but it's not happening. But yeah, the Wallace Monument, this is it. Let's just flick you around. Zoom in a bit, up above the van there, above the, all the houses, there's your Wallace Monument from William Wallace. Oh well, maybe next time. You probably think to yourself, why am I bothering? What's this video all about? Why is he out doing what he's doing? Why can't he just stop videoing and stop taking pictures and just go home and, <laughs> and stuff like that? But the point of the point is, I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying talking to you, making the videos. Um, I'm enjoying um, getting wet. <laughs> I'm enjoying driving me van around and just being free. I'm just enjoying it. So yeah, as much as this is an absolute waste of time, what else could I be doing apart from heading on home? So I'm just making it up as I'm going along and I'm taking you along for the ride. Those of you that are watching are probably interested in my crazy antics and those of you that are not watching, then it's not worth talking to you because you're not there to talk to. <laughs> so let's see if I can get in a position. The light's still tempting me. It's still trying to drop below that heavy cloud, but the rain is just, relentless it's followed me in and it's it's got me again so i'm going to go back up onto the main road back up onto the motorway and head towards the full cut wheel that's the castle up there look up there on that hill that's what i want to try and get a shot of and i just can't get in a place where i can get it both me sat navs are shouting at me 
I've got the full cut wheel set in. If the conditions don't get any better between now and 17 miles, I'm not even going to stop at the full cut wheel because I can shoot in this. It's just ridiculous. There's, uh, I, I was thinking black and white, long exposure, get the movement in the wheel. Um, but how can you do a long exposure when the rain's like this? So I know that I said that uh, I was going to go straight down, but I was already in the sat nav and the sat nav brought us here. Um, so this is the full curb wheel. This is the top end. Uh, it looks like everything's changed since the last time I came and uh, you now have to pay for parking. Lucky enough, it's all green today, whether it's mm -hmm. because it's all open. Um, but the canal comes along this, along this uh, canal <laughs> and it gets to the end here and then it stops. And the next canal is down there. So what, it, what they did is they built this um, wheel. So the canal boats on the barges or the canal boats, they go into the end of there. And once they go into the end, this then spins round and it puts them down in the bottom and then they drive out the bottom. So pretty awesome, really. Pretty clever, pretty awesome. But I'm not gonna get a picture because the weather did dry. And as soon as I got to here, you can see the weather's got wet again. So I'll take you for a quick drive down the bottom and then we're gonna head down to the Kelpies, have a quick nose at them and we're just going to keep moving uh, and just get down to where we need to. I don't know what those people are doing up there, but they're obviously vlogging. Well, I've just got my first glimpse of the Kelpies and they're there. And again, if I could actually park in these trees and shoot through, you've got a black sky and the light shining on it. But it just depends where you can get to actually see them. They're off to my left at the moment, which you won't be able to see from where you are. If I could walk back along this bridge, I could get a shot from the bridge. Uh, car park for Kelpies is on the left. So let's just have a quick little look. The sun is dropping in the sky very, very fast. But it's not raining yet. It's not raining just yet. Can I just get a little photograph of the Kelpies with a longer lens, make them shine against the black sky? Something a little bit unique again. Let's have a look. Turn left, then keep right. pretty good shot looking through the grass and uh, getting rid of all the distractions but I was trying to get a rainbow in <laughs> I just couldn't quite get it in but I'm gonna see if I can get one of the rainbow on its own and then maybe put the kelpies in the rainbow afterwards just for fun but yeah shooting through the grass was definitely the way to do it We've got to get going. 
the sky is doing things. I don't know how far it is now to where we're going to, but I think that was quite a nice shot of the Kelpies. Um, they are at the end of the day, just a big steel structure. But what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm gonna try and get to Queens Ferry South. Come on, sat nav, bring up the sat nav. I'm gonna try and get to Queens Ferry South. Beautiful rainbow, beautiful sky. And I wanna try and get a picture of the bridges with some color just to finish off my trip to Scotland. So, wing it round here out of this car park. Again, because the barriers are up, it was free. Look at the moody sky over there. The sun is, as I look at it now, going to drop behind some cloud. So we're not probably gonna get that sunset I want. But we can always live in hope and just keep on going. So I've got another plan. <laughs> I know, I'm full of them, aren't I? Um, I'm at Queen's Ferry. Um, in a quarter of a mile. I've got the old rail bridge in front of me. Now I've taken photographs of that loads and loads of times. So I've just come down close and I thought, hang on a minute, I wonder if Google can get me along the shoreline on the left-hand side of the new bridge so I can shoot all the big stanchions with this. There's a great big cloud with a bit of colour on it. Um, so I want to see if I can... I want to see if I can get down underneath the new bridge, basically, and along the road a bit. And I do really like bridges. Um, they're very impressive. I got a photograph of this bridge um, and I will put it up on the screen for you if I can find it, that I'm I manipulated between two images, a morning and an evening image. And I'm sure I've shown it on my channel before, uh, but called it Dust to Dawn or Dawn to Dusk. And uh, you can just see the bright highlighted part on the right hand side of the image, which is the new bridge being built. So I actually got a picture of it when it was actually being built and just the stanchions about the joining bits. So, wow, this road is going under the new bridge. So we might be able to get in position to actually get a little photograph of the, the new fourth bridge and then uh, some cloud behind it. I'm gonna get wet in a minute because I'm stood right next to the river, well, the sea, the estuary, and every so often a wave's splashing me, but it's the first opportunity I've got to actually set up a composition and take a photograph. I've got these little set of rocks down in the foreground. I'm doing that 40 second exposure again, and then I've got the bridge up in front of me. So it's almost a little bit of a, a photography, seascape type, landscape sort of thing. F7.1. I'm just watching these waters splashing next to me. I just hope it doesn't get me or splash on the camera. That's not bad. Not bad. I'm going to do one more at 50 seconds. Bugger off! Before the rain catches up with me again. I think the rain may have passed, but yeah, I'm doing a 50 second one, which will give me a nice bright air image. Very, very smoothed out water. And then the bridge with the little lights flashing on it in the distance. And then uh, I think it's time for me to settle down for the night and call it quits. What a trip it's been down, eh? It's chasing the, sort of chasing the lights. Not the word, it's been chasing the bloody, trying to get away from the rain more than anything. So I'm still parked next to that shoreline, listening to the sound of the water and the sound of the waves, which I just absolutely love. And I've been waiting for blue hour and blue hours come in and now they've turned the lights on on the bridge. So I'm gonna go back down and get another shot of this 
leading line of the rocks, a nice long exposure. I'm getting a bit of a, a light reflection now on the water and the tide's going out slightly. So I might just be able to get on the edge of the shore a little bit more and get another shot from down there as well. So um, yeah, there's a couple more rocks just popping out of the water that might just work. So I'll see if I can get this shot as well. And then that's probably going to be the end of my, the end of my evening. There's no more photographs. There's just home and motorway. Um, got up this morning, tidied up the van a little bit, looked outside and it's just gray and boring. Um, I think the sun's, what are we on? Oh, my watch is dead, I'll put it on charge. I think the sun's probably just about up. I, I don't think we're going to get any colour this morning, so I think I'm going to check out and say goodbye. Um, morning regime's done, teeth are done. All I've got to do now is get rid of my rubbish, put it in the bin, empty the rest of my water out, which I don't need, and uh, head off home. So I hope you enjoyed this little trip to Scotland. Um, say little, it's been a week, hasn't it? So it's not really been little. Um, if you did enjoy it, please let me know please let me know in the comments um, what you thought of my adventure my little journey um, it wasn't what I planned it to be um, absolutely nowhere near what I planned um, I planned to go to places spend some time there get some concentrating kind of get some epic shots and it turned out that I, I didn't do any walking um, the furthest I walked was to the waterfall just to have a look at it um, yeah, I just didn't really leave the van much, did I? So whether it's because I was on my own and I didn't, I'm didn't, i not keen on walking on my own or whether it's just the weather and the conditions and the places I went to just weren't for it. And time, time scale. I think you need to go to these places, especially right up in the Highlands, and spend two or three days maybe in one place and then explore, whereas I sort of went and then moved down further and moved down further purely really time constraints you saw what it's taken me to get to these places i've not had a lot of daylight um you know sun rising sort of eight half eight sun setting half three four o'clock you don't get a lot of daylight so that's probably why it didn't go to plan i think so thank you very much all's well that ends well i'm safe i haven't got hurt and all i've got to do is get me and the bus home which is about five hour journey and uh See you next time. I have no idea where I'm going to be next time. I'm going to have a couple of weekends off. Um, I've got to do some stuff for the Escute mountain bike. Um, I really have been bad on that, so I need to get that out and do a video for them. So, uh, yeah, ciao for now. See you soon. And uh, thanks for joining me. And if you have joined me through the whole week, thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. And, um, yeah, ciao for now. Bye-bye. See you soon.